Well, today we're going to have a little bit of fun as we take wine aeration to the extreme. Hello and welcome to the Grape Explorer where we celebrate the world of wine. On this channel we do wine education, product reviews and lots of tastings. So if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Yep, we're going to aerate some wine today, but I think the question first should be why do we aerate wine? Uh, when we swirl wine in our glass, uh, we are oxygenating that wine, we're, we're getting it in contact with the oxygen. And that does a couple of things, that, that softens some of the, the tannins perhaps in some of the wine, as well as opening up some of those flavours as well. You know, something as simple as actually just pouring uh, wine into a glass is actually going to start to open it up. But people do different things in different ways to get the most out of aeration. So swirling your glass of wine is a, is a classic example of how to aerate and open up your wine. You can, of course, buy wine aerators uh, where you pour the wine through a device to open up the wine. And lots of people also use things like decanters, particularly for things like aged wine, although they do that to get rid of sediments as well. They're also doing it to give the wine a chance to breathe before they think it's appropriate for it to be poured. Today, however, I'm going to make things a little bit more extreme and do something that I've seen which is referred to as hyper decanting. And you do that with a blender. I've got my super duper blender here which I'm going to pour uh, some wine into this and then get it aerated through that. And for comparison, I'm going to be pouring a glass and just leaving it absolutely still. I'm not going to aerate it at all. Uh, the wine that I've chosen for today is a Niederberg Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa. Uh, the reason I've chosen Cabernet Sauvignon is quite a thick skinned grape, therefore it means it can be quite tannic um, in, its, in its profile. You know, from a, from a palate perspective it can feel quite tannic. And of course what I'm trying to do with aeration is actually soften that wine if possible uh, by getting the oxygen in contact with the wine itself. So I'm just going to open this straight out of the bottle. So as you can see this is a fresh bottle, nothing's been prepared before beforehand. I am going to pour myself a glass of it here, which we're going to put to one side. And then similarly, I'm going to pour some in my blender cup as well. There we go. Okay, bottle there. Lovely. Lid on. Blender center stage. Whilst I'm doing this, I just want to tell you a really funny story um, about something that happened to me last night as well. So, and so I managed to get a cheeky thumb in. Okay, um, here is our wine. Look at that, beautifully bubbly. Uh, just what you want out of your wine, of course, to be frothy. Um, but let's see how this compares to the normal wine. So. That's really fizzed up, that's possibly really opened it up. So we've hyper decanted our wine now and we're going to do a bit of a comparison side by side to see what we're getting. It's interesting, coming through on this one, the, the, the aromas are very dark fruits as you might imagine from something like a Cabernet Sauvignon but it's a little stifled, um, the, the aromas that have come through, which is why I'm really curious to see what's happened on this one. Now, I've got no problems with aerating this one because it's just been through the blender. Definitely more lifted. I would still say that some of the characteristics of this particular wine are a little bit stifled. Uh, on the taste, quite drying, quite tannic, straight out of the bottle. Um, so how does this one compare? Well, I'm not just saying this, but the moment that went into my mouth, that was incredibly soft by comparison to that one. This one felt a little bitter, a little bit harsher. And this one actually just felt smooth um, going in. Um, and, and actually quite nice. I think the aromas, the, the taste is similar, um, but it was just a lot, a lot softer. Now I only hyper decanted that for a few seconds, so let's see what happens if we hyper decant for even longer. So I've just done it for another sort of 20 seconds maybe, um, on top of the 10 seconds that perhaps I did originally. It's actually looked like it was smoking as it came out of the top of the uh, glass there. Um, pretty frothy, I think you could agree. Pretty fizzy, pretty frothy. Has it improved from the last taste that I took? 
Gonna give it a swirl myself because I can't help myself. The aromas, which to be honest, were a little bit musty coming out of the glass, have actually fallen away on this occasion. Um, it really has softened it. That's even softer in, in the mouth. Now, I only paid five pounds for this bottle. Deliberately, again, I wanted to choose something that was at the cheaper end of, of what was available. Those are the sorts of things that I think probably need a little bit softening. I do find the cheaper ones quite harsh. I find that there's, you know, that they've almost had the juice, the life squeezed out of the berries. So actually softening a wine in this way uh, actually works really well. It's a little bit green in terms of a taste profile, but I think that speaks perhaps to something of the the cheapness of this one. This is a bulk wine uh, from South Africa. But that's incredible. You know, I've gone from, I'm just gonna go back to the original one here. They're really different. And um, that's really incredible how, how they've changed in that way. Same glass of wine. Um, and you would think they were, they were two completely different wines. Now, I'm not recommending that you go out and you start to hyper decant your very best bottles of wine. But I think if you've picked out a wine that's perhaps a little bit cheaper, you've got something on the shelf that's a little bit cheaper that you think you need to be able to drink and you're a bit worried perhaps it's a little bit too harsh, there's actually no harm in putting it through one of these blenders at all. I actually would recommend doing it. I can't quite believe that it has softened it in such a way. Particularly the mouthfeel, that's where I'm really getting the benefit of this particular wine. The mouthfeel is so much softer, it's a lot velvetier. Is that a word? Um, and, and just a little bit more enjoyable as a result of that. But over to you, hyper decanting. Is it something you've tried before? And if so, what were your results? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.